What's up, Square Pimp Brigade? On this episode, we have comedian John Campanelli. Uh, we discussed uh, the T.I. thing and the Godfrey situation and T.I. getting booed. We talked about the financial loss of dating, uh, when she's interviewing you, uh, and when you should be interviewing her and knowing what your own personal value is. Yeah, it's definitely a fun one. And uh, But a reminder, guys, please join us over at Patreon, patreon.com slash manschool202. That's where we do the bonus shows. We do uh, listener mail, and we do extra episodes. And that includes this episode where we continue with John Campanelli as we discuss uh, a woman's, uh, women's jealousy, the value of saying no, uh, and women who don't look like their pictures in apps, uh, you know, on dating apps. So all of that and more advice over at patreon.com slash manschool202. It helps us keep the show going. So uh, support us. Enjoy the show. Thanks, y'all. Okay, cool. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't. Yo, 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 what's up? GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do to sexual revolutions being podcasted? And I am excited. Uh, uh, this is a special show. We got a special guest. Now, I know I've said that 500 times before, but this time I mean it. So, <laughs> we get ready to get it in. Harry, what's going on? You ready to rock and roll? Absolutely, I'm ready to rock and roll. Was, yeah, uh, you as you said last, good? I'm feeling great. You know, I, I'm ready to. Get, as you said last time, we're getting it hard, and I was like, "What? That's the new phrase. That's what the kids are using." Getting it hard. That's what you said last time. I, I don't know if I said that. I you did. You most definitely did. I don't I'll play it back for that. you. You did. You I, definitely I did. You sure? Time to get hard. I think is what you said. No, no, I absolutely did not say that. I think you I'm, said I'm that. I'm pretty sure you did. Pretty sure you did. <laughs> uh, yo, uh, you want to do the intro? Uh, yeah, man. I mean, just a, a funny, talented dude. Uh, I, ladies and gentlemen, give it up for John Campanelli, everybody. Put your what hands up, together. John? What's going Canada, on? Canada's own John Campanelli. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I guess I guess right out of the gates, I guess we got to address it. Yeah, just I uh, didn't even realize I had this on until the, the video came up and I was like, oh, I'm wearing a Canada t-shirt. I just like the way it looks and I just threw it on. So I'm not Canadian. I like Canadians. Uh, I'm not pro or anti-Canadian. Uh, I will say this. Fuck, fuck Canada. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> that shirt does automatically make you look Canadian. I will, <laughs> I does, will admit. I mean, right? How yeah. funny is that? I feel like, I feel like you're Graham K's brother. <laughs> well, this is what's funny is, and I'm not doing this. This wasn't staged. I actually had this sent to me from a fan in Canada. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. And it's just, a, and I, I got it a couple months ago, and I just put it on like, a week ago and i was like oh this looks really cool on me yeah. and i just yeah it's one of those t-shirts it's just the, the type of gray with the red yeah. i just I mean, it pops, I like it it pops. Yeah, nice yeah, yeah, yeah. john you you're a uh new york like we knew each other like new york back like when i mean i'm trying to remember when we met um so i've been doing comedy since like 2010 right but i used to come back and forth a lot right right so I definitely just I really just in the trenches. I don't think there's like a one specific moment, but yeah, yeah. I was fairly by coastal until like relocating here. Um, because I'm ba being based out of here since like where are you from originally? Westchester, New York. Westchester, and yeah. um, and you 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 opened for some pretty heavy hitters, you know, early on in your in your career. Like like who can talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I mean a lot. Uh, I mean, I think the coolest I uh, was, I did a, a tour with Dane Cook, which was theaters and arenas, mm -hmm. like, you know, just really awesome to, to play those. Um, and I, I worked with him a bunch, uh, which, I mean, those shows are just incredible. And then otherwise, I mean, scattered opening up for a bunch of guys, like uh, I actually opened up for Russell Peters not too long ago. Mm -hmm. um, Young, young, I opened up for um, like Eliza Schlesinger, mm. and Bobby Lee a little bit. Yeah. So a, a bunch of a bunch of them. Um, there's there's a there's a there's a ton more that were just kind yeah, of yeah. scattered, but yeah. Now it. I don't know. Did you know? Did you see what happened with the the whole? The, I don't know if you know about the Ti thing. Are you aware of what happened? With yeah. That? So a little bit. So so. It's an interesting. Harry is in his glory. Uh, oh my so, god, I'm so happy. So, uh, what do you? What did you hear? I don't want to. I don't want to assume that you know. So, 
a few things. It started off where he's just kind of, you know, getting up on shows and, and maybe uh, this is what I've heard. This is what I, All right. maybe he's like disrespecting the stage a little bit. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, just kind of um, was already kind of getting into it with some comics. And then the big thing, I think, was that he essentially got on stage with a female comic and, and ripped the mic out of her. Oh, wow, wow. You don't know the whole, the, yeah, yeah. You just know the piece. So what happened? What, well, I'm what being ha- diplomatic. What I'm hearing is not good. I'm just being a little diplomatic. Yeah, okay. I, well, I mean, what happened happened was, uh, first it was a thing with Godfrey. There was a thing that went down with Godfrey. That was the first incident where uh, Godfrey had did like an hour and a half. He just, he had been doing comedy about four weeks and he, uh, he came out and because he is who he is, went on after Godfrey did an hour and 45 minutes headlining and then did another half hour afterwards. Yeah, your face, the face says it all. So yeah. It's, it's just not, not the, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I'm almost not even following. That's ridiculous. He did. Yeah. yeah. That's weird. Well, it, you know, I mean, I, he, it, we, he, he was in Atlanta and Atlanta is kind of like his city. Right. And like he owns Atlanta and everybody. And so, he had been doing comedy, but he had been basically, um, you know, everybody's been putting him up and they will, and everybody's like sucking his dick because they're like, oh, it's T.I. So he could do whatever he wants to do. And then, uh, so there was a whole thing where, you know, it just was kind of a disrespectful thing to do, especially to Godfrey, because, you know, Godfrey's one of the gods, you know, not excuse the pun, right? But, you know, it's just... Like and even though he's not as famous as like Chris Rock or or or, or um or Chappelle, they wouldn't even. Yeah, no, totally. And and, and I bet I bet what Godfrey's reaction was probably he's just such a humble guy. I'm sure he was just. He like, was cool, right. but then he kind of went on his podcast and he bitched about it, and then oh. Ti heard him, you know, because he as he should have, you know, it, it wasn't appropriate. And then there was a whole big thing where Ti was checking him and stuff like that. And then I he I was there was a whole live and I was on the live with him and whatever and then we we uh I basically said to him I said first of all you know because I you know John I mean you you know my vibe like I don't give a fuck mm-hmm. I'm not I'm not pulling no punches I like first of all there's an etiquette to this to- well right that's what I'm that's what I'm thinking now is and and this is a bigger thing than just Ti to me it's a bigger symptom and what Ti is doing is he's making a mockery out of stand up. Right. And it's not T.I.'s not the only one doing it. Uh, you know, um, he's it's T.I. So he's going to get the most press. But under our noses, there are a lot of, you know, people that two year comics that are also doing it, that are buying followers and and getting up places they don't deserve to and, and manipulating their way in the scene. They're not right. doing the T.I. approach. But I what I'm seeing from this is like comedy is really being infiltrated and, and made a mockery of at yeah. all levels right now. And it's yeah. really sad to watch for me because I've been in the trenches working my ass off. I've paid my dues for, you know, 30 million for 30 different comics. Like I paid enough yeah. dues for like 30 comics. Now, no one should yeah. feel bad for that. And like things change. And like, I understand that it's like, oh, crime your river. Right. But I just think that like, and I think you'll agree that like, sure. you really got to stand up is a beautiful art form when yeah. done correctly. And it takes time and you really got to nuanced and you really got to do it for a while, you yeah. know? And, a lot- and the longer you do it, the better you get at it. You know, you, it just and you there's no real substitute for time doing Stand-up it. Stand up comedy, it doesn't get the respect it deserves. It is the hardest job to do yes. in the world. I don't mean it's the most taxing physically. There are jobs that are physically harder, but to do competently, it is the hardest job to do in the world. There's other comedians, people who are genuinely funny that can't do stand up. There's yeah. people who are funny, even funny there people are writers, can't do stand up. Writers and sketch people who can't do can't do stand up. There are people who are naturally funny in everyday life that cannot do stand up comedy. It is a completely There are comics who did comedy who were funny and then came back and, and tried to do, it do again. let you know stop doing it like yeah. you know like Chris Tucker blew up on 7 minutes of a uh, uh, Def Jam and then did movies and then never really came back to the kind of prowess that he was at the time when he blew up. And so, you know, even that's the case. I mean, why do you think Eddie Murphy won't come back? He's not coming back because he doesn't think he could come back. You know what I mean? Or at least not at the proficiency. Well, you know what it is also in a lot of, and and this is part of it, um, is I believe that 
they don't want, some of these guys don't want to come back also because they, they, they don't feel they're going to be given an opportunity to come back appropriately. It's going to be immediately, you know, someone's going to find a way to record something. Someone's going to block. And you're not going to be ready. It's like they just want to go. The dudes that do it and the, these legends, they want to be able to get back on that stage and be, be able good. to find, find themselves yeah. for a second. And they're not going to be able to do it. So everyone's just going to attack them because, like I said, we're, we're, we're exploiting and making a mockery out of stand up. So these yeah. dudes can't go back and be artists. Yeah. Um, and I think that's a really big problem. And I don't want to speak for him because, you know, but I, I know Jim Carrey pretty well. And I know yeah. that one of the, he had, he had, we had a conversation about this, you know, and he, he's such a, his stand up, you know, he really gets in, into it, you know? So yeah, yeah. I think a little bit, he's like, I well, would he like, gets into everything. He immerses himself oh, yeah. into everything. Yeah. So I think a little bit he wanted to get on. He would want to go back and just be able to play around for a little bit. And I don't and he, feel he thinks he could be able to do that. And he, because the expectation is so high. Absolutely. Well, then what happened, part two was the thing with the girl. Mm -hmm. He came to a spot in Atlanta, was heckling this girl. And then the girl, because he had some sexual allegations about him and his wife, rumors. And the girl said, well, what, what? She, he, so he was like, bitch, take your wig off. And he was like heckling her, which... You never like you know. I'm not saying if you're a comic, if you're on stage and there's a comic heckling you, I will check him. Yeah. Yo, what the fuck are you doing, dog? Like this is there's a there's a club that we're in. Even if we don't know each other, the real a, like I've done that at, at, for for you know New Jacks where somebody's yelling or yo yo shut the fuck up. You know yeah. what I mean? So there was that, and then she said, so you. You know she's she's a comic i don't know i think she's been doing it about eight seven eight years and he's been doing it four weeks and so he goes yeah well i'll take my wig off when you talk about those sexual assault allegations and then all of us he Wait, got why, mad why did he tell her to take the wig off why did he scream that so why, she was he... doing a bit about being married being married and, and he was like shut the fuck up bitch he was just heckling her was he just but, heckling her, or who was he yeah, upset with no her reason. for having done he, jokes? No, he didn't like what she was talking about. But is he so in real life? Was is Ti really like that type of person? Because I wasn't sure if it was like. How a, do we know? I mean, all we know from him is the, his rap stuff. Well, because I'm wondering if he is doing what a lot of rappers do and creating and creating this because he thinks this is what he needs to do to get heat. Like, is he doing this because he's really like a punk or is he doing this because he thinks like, yo, this is the game. I'm going to start beef. I want people to know I'm here. Like, what, what does he think he's doing? Because Maybe. Of I, I, no, I, it doesn't seem like that. It seems like very natural because I yeah. when I we had a whole after the whole Godfrey thing, we ended up squashing the thing. But I was on the live and I said, look, there's a there's you you have to respect. Basically, I won't get into the detail. Y'all, it's online. If y'all want to check it out, I basically was like, there's an etiquette to this. And you're not following the etiquette. And I was like, you're out doing 30, 35 minutes, and you can't do 35 minutes. And wow. the thing about doing 35 minutes is it, you we all get five minutes. Right. You start with five minutes. You don't right. get seven minutes till you get till you're funny at five. You don't get ten till you're funny at seven. And so we learn the economy of time in the process of that growth, that that growth so that but if you're a new jack and you get 30 minutes, a joke that you and I could do in seven seconds, it'll take him two minutes to do. Right. Because he doesn't understand, he doesn't understand that, that, that you have to edit and, and people are not, they don't want to hear all the shit. Like it sounds like what he wants, to, what he should be doing and what I think a lot of people should start doing personally is, hey man, maybe you're really more of a, of a personal appearance maybe like you're trying to do stand-up even if he uh, wants to do stand-up you still all you do is you get up under somebody who knows what the fuck is yeah. and you you submit to the process that's what i'm saying but i'm seeing a, a lot of a, a rise in this happening where people are kind of pivoting to stand-up right people that have followings uh because yeah, it's a money yeah. grab right so at what point is it is do we just have to really start calling it what it is and it's live appearances and it's like this whole notion that like they're doing stand up it's like look man maybe at some point it will be stand up right now you're, what you're doing is like a personal appearance you know well you're I'm gonna let me wrap this up because I want to get into you I can feel ha Harry 
Um, <laughs> looking at me great. Uh, but so what happened was, anyway, long story short, that was an incident where he snatched the mic out from the grill. And then uh, this weekend passed, he did the Barclay Center, and he got booed off the stage. But prior to being booed off the stage, um, the girl who he snatched the thing from was like, you know, I'm not going to have you tell me what I can say and what I can't say. Or I, I, I'm, I'm about this comedy shit, blah, 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 blah. And she goes, and comedy is hard. And he goes, no, it's not. No, it's not. And really, he doesn't think it's hard because... He's been coddled. You didn't know that, Harry. You make it a fake. I didn't hear that part. No. Oh yeah, he, she goes. Comedy's hard, and he goes, "No, it ain't. No, it ain't." He's also said the reason why comics are made, comics, comics are mad at me for doing comedy is because I'm so good at it. And so he's such a comic. Did he handle getting booed off stage the same way Burr handled getting booed off stage? No, absolutely not. Absolutely. No, he just, I just uh, sat there and got booed. Yeah, you just, just got there. booed. I mean, I do commend him because he took the he did his all his time. He did all his time, and then he was on stage the next day. He got back in an arena. Did well, another I don't arena. know. Well, let's let's also not forget this guy's been a performer for years. So absolutely, he's doing absolutely. so like that part of it probably doesn't phase him. You right, know, right. It but like, it should. It should yeah. because the point is yeah. being yeah. funny. That, yes. I mean, there's a level where it becomes consistency, but there is another level where it's delusion. Yeah. To, yeah, to totally. sit there and think that you did a good job and not to go, man, this was terrible. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's some yeah, level of he, mental Mike, illness or delusion. Michael Black, he did a, a live with Michael Blackson, and he was like, he, Mike, he was like, oh, I loved it. I love getting booed because now I, we don't we don't fold, we fight. He has all these sayings, and it's like, well, it's just um, the wrong mentality. It's just, it's just like, look, and it's like, look, he he really was it. He's yeah. song's great, you know, but like. It's just the wrong mentality for this art form, you know? Right, right, right. Because it, there's, there's a level of humility. You yes. have, if you have no humility, Vulnerability. you will not be funny. Harry made this observation that I thought was fucking brilliant. Mm. That what he's doing is like a wrestling heel. Yeah, he doesn't understand. He's going out there. He thinks... So the first thing he does is he goes, uh, I'm a superstar, right? He goes, tell I'm not a comedian. I'm, I'm a superstar. I'm a superstar. Right. So in his head, like the million dollar man, Ted DiBiase, is the good guy. <laughs> like he's doing all the things you would do to intentionally get booed. Like, hey, listen, I make more money than you. I, I'm better than you. Like, it's just, it's just, he did. A, he had a bit. I don't know if you knew this, Harry, but he, the bit that they started booing, he goes, if any of y'all, because he's known for saying expeditiously, like that's his word. He uses words that he really probably un, unnecessary for me. So he goes, if I say a word, and you don't know the word, raise your hand and I'll give you the definition, which is really, that's condescending. Again, yeah, it's condescending. Heel shit. And, yeah, it's just like the fucking honky tonk man up there while they're <laughs> booing, going, I know you love me. Thank you guys. <laughs> I mean, it's mental illness. Quiet down, you with yes. your fat wives what, and you. <laughs> what I'd like to have right now is for all you fat, out of shape. <laughs> pieces of Brooklyn I mean, trailer it's, it's trash. It's almost funny, but for like the wrong reasons. Yeah. <laughs> That's the point, though. It's like he's doing those things. He's just accidentally doing things that are not just just don't endear you to the audience at all. No, oh, yeah. Telling them that they're stupid, right? They're too stupid to understand your big words, which he doesn't use big words. He just throws them in there for no reason. Right, right, like, right, right, right. Which is very weird. Then to, yeah. to remind them that, hey, you're a superstar. I'm not a comedian. I'm a I'm superstar. I'm a superstar. And you're like, you're a fucking clown. Letting the people know that you're rich. Letting them know that you're, yeah, uh, you're my, telling my kids I'm rich. Really a good way for people to go there and forget about their problems. And really yeah. yeah. And, 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 they, and, they, and, they, and it was, and I'm so proud of Brooklyn because Brooklyn gave him a nice booing, a nice, healthy <laughs> booing where it starts like boo, boo, boo. 15,000 people. 15,000. Like, I mean, that guy has been doing comedy for what a, a month now or whatever. Now about, about three in, his defense, now. whatever. Like, in his defense, it feels like years at this point. It does. Yeah, yeah. it does feel like years. <laughs> he got booed. He got booed by more people in one night than you or I have been booed our entire careers combined. Yeah. yeah more, if more you people took all the people hate who, his comedy, that I mean, could in ever one like night, your comedy. 10 to 15,000 people booed him. Yeah crazy anyway and then he's gonna one. keep going oh yeah 
He's going to keep going. And he's probably not going to get better because he's not humil. He has no humility to, to, the to the learn process, it. To submit well, to he's the put process. himself in, a, in, a, in an artistic, uh, an interesting artistic situation because he'll have to really step back in order to really move forward. But yeah. it seems like he just is going to double down. Oh, yeah. That's exactly what he's doing. Good. But he's surrounded by yes people. And then the yeah. other thing that Dante told him when he was on that show with, uh, with Godfrey, when they were talking to T.I., you know, he goes, hey, there's a method and, you know, there's a, you know, there's a way to learn this thing. And I forget it was him or his, you know, his cronies, whoever. No, it was him. Who, who he went, was like, I'm uh, done talking to you. Yeah. I was like, oh, like sharks oh. are born. That's your journey. Sharks are born swimming. <laughs> and it's just an asinine way to look at something. And would you ever allow some? I mean, it's just because you're good at producing music. Does that mean you're automatically good at everything? Yeah, well, you know what you, you know, find? Like, I, it's where, where like promote. Mentality? Here's the thing. People who promote comedy usually yeah. suck at comedy. Sure. Right? Yeah. Which is which is a really close jump, but not a... a not the same it's, thing, it's though. It's not the same thing. But uh, so I, I just wanted to use that to talk about the, the humility. You know, when you have a level of humility, and I, and I don't mean where you're... you're depressing and you're down on yourself but to have a reasonable amount of a, a proper amount of humility is what makes you endearing and being able to recognize that and kind of deal with that, that in a real sense is what makes you attractive um, I, I mean of course yeah uh, it makes you entertaining and it makes people it makes people want to hold on to what you're saying and really kind of go on that journey with you John, do you have a girl? You got a girl now, or you just solo? Or? I'm single right now. Uh, you know, I'm back in New York. Uh, great segue, by the way. Yeah. Uh, so humility. Anyway, John, you got a girl. Um, <laughs> you know, dating in New York so far has not been wonderful. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm just kind of riding solo here. Uh, you know, and and it's it, yeah, it's it's not it's it's look, New York dating is like it's expensive. Yeah. You know, so it hasn't been super fun. Um, mm -hmm. I'm weird too with. I'm pro look, it's progressive. I think. What do you I'm mean? I'm very weird. I'm very weird with, with with first dates now because I'm 37. Right. And I've wasted. I've spent so much money. Right. On the first date. Life. Like if I, if I went to a financial advisor and I, and I was like, hey, I want to invest in first dates, he'd be right. like, you're just going to lose so much money. Right, right, you know, right. This is a horrible, horrible investment. It's a right. bad financial investment for that process. If you went, listen, I'm going to spend at least $200 uh, every time in an attempt to find a wife who the more than likely will leave with half my stuff. Well, yeah, and I don't at really some want, point. I just, wanna, I just want. I really want to. Uh, Hopefully, we'll have some kids. That'll be another. Uh, uh, you another know, hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, and I don't. I don't really enjoy the first date interview process that's in New York more so than was in L.A. Um, and I'm not saying L.A. is better, but it was just different. But like, I'm having an issue with like, I, I, I do it, and I, I know this is not popular. I just don't understand anymore because you know. Marriage is derived from ownership, from men actually owning women, right? Like that's right. what it derives from. Sure. Right. Yeah. Now we're at this point where we really are trying to achieve equality. And we, we're at this point where uh, men do not control or own women. And, and we really want to get to this, this point where we have like uh, equal rights for, for sure. You know, so with that being said, and, I'm, and I really mean this, I think it's bizarre if I go on a date with someone who does, who's doing really well, or maybe even makes more money than me, and I have to pay. I find it weird, because you don't right. need the money. Right. You no, know? so it's about the chivalry, I kind of guess. Yeah, it's a yeah. weird, ex because if you don't pay, then they think there's something weird about you. Yeah, and it's not that sure. I can't afford yeah. it, it's just that I don't understand why, like the I would principle. start with, she's, a, she's a, a partner at a real estate law firm, and she's mm. very well. Right. And I'm like, why am I paying for her? Right, like right. She has tons of money. And then we went out a bunch of times and I kept paying. And I, 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 at some point I'm like, so at this point, you just get to hoard all your money. Right. And I get to spend mine. And I, well, that's, I that's also why she has the money that she has is because the system is set up in a way. So one of the things, this is an interesting thing. This takes me right into a, a situation, something that I, you know, philosophies that I talk about all the time. 
um, over anytime you're in a relationship, anytime you're in a male male female relationship. I say one thing too. I don't want to yeah. pick up. I just want you guys to know I am not cheap. Okay. I, if, if the girl is, if the person is, say it's she's, I'm 37. Say she's like 29 and still in grad school or something. Mm -hmm. or, I'll pay. Right. About that. But if, if if it's something where, so I don't want you to think that like I'm like. I, I'm, well, I'm not okay, first of all, let me let me explain something to you. I would never judge you mm -hmm. based, the I, I don't give a fuck fuck them too. No, you know what I mean? <laughs> like and I don't mean fuck them in that way, but no, I mean, no, I know, they I don't know. get to so you learn you you, you the, the whole dialogue here is to learn something that you haven't learned. That that's the whole point of it, uh, a point of the show. So and what I say all the time is that if you anytime you're in a relationship and you're the man of the relationship, you will do things that you don't want to do. You will spend money you don't want to spend. Yeah. You will listen to things you don't want to listen to. You will go places you don't want to go. You will have to have patience about things that you don't want to have a patience. So the discussions it is, about things you don't give a fuck a about. It is a sacrifice. Yeah. Any, yeah. any relationship that you that a man enters into there's no the, the benefit he decides what that benefit is now it's i i hate to use the analogy and then again no i know it's like it's like you get a it's like you get a a, a puppy i gotta pay for the shots right i gotta train him i gotta walk him rain sleet snow whatever it is because if i don't walk him they can shit in my house I got to, and I'm making a commitment that at some point in time when the hip dysplasia kicks in, I'm going to have to clean, walk this, pick this dog up and carry him outside so he can shit, pick him up and until we have to put him down. So what's interesting about it is the, the relationship, if it's whatever you're getting out of this relationship is in the same way. We still decide like, um, we still decide to have a, have a, might decide to get a lab. And you go, well, what I get from this is the fact when I come home, there's companionship, there's this. But what you give that dog is you do not get back. What you get from them is something that you perceive is important. And because you perceive it's important, you make the deal. But you're making a deal knowing that you lose in the end because the system is set up that you lose. That's what the system is set up for. And so what happens moreover is the difference is what I don't understand. If I'm entering into an agreement that I know that I'm already that you lose is so funny to say, by the way. Oh, oh, oh you yeah. lose, you're losing. It's set up so you lose. It's so funny. <laughs> you, I, and, I'm, and I go, I don't mind losing, but I will not lose and not get what I want also. I will make I will make a deal that I know clearly is not equal. That I'm gonna have to do more, be more. I'm the guy who has to. If there's a noise bump in the night, I gotta go down and, yeah. and check to see where the noise is coming from. I'm, I'm with. I will work. I will support. I will protect. But what I want out of this, I'm gonna get. I'm not, and I, and I don't understand how men get into these relationships where there, there is clearly a. This is a fucked up deal. Then I and if she doesn't work and we did divorce, she takes half of my shit, and then I. Also not here's the thing though. Here's the thing. It's also not a lot of times fulfilling for the woman either. So that the system that's set up to kind of that 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 we're talking about, where the men are on the bad side of it, it's also it's not a good relationship. So the women don't get anything good out of it. Also, so that's like that's my not true. They, you just said you have there's a situation where you're doing how many first dates and right, you right. paid everything. Right, right. So at she the absolutely bare minimum, is giving it. At she's the get, bare minimum, she's, she's getting everything. Minimum. Right, but she's going to end up with, because I do think this is someone who wants to settle down, she's not going to end up in a good relationship or she's going to end up with a guy who just blindly throws money, oh, but he's probably going to be getting you know hookers and God knows what because... Yeah, anyone, but that could be with any human, uh, any that aspect could be, of human that's nature. Not a, that's not yeah. the, the... What I'm saying, on a fundamental level, if you look at this as a business deal, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a shitty business deal. Shitty you're, business deal yeah. you're making a shitty deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you decide, you go, okay, I enjoy her company. 
I want some I mean, because we don't want to be alone. We like the companionship. Yeah. We want, you know, we like the way she looks. We like fucking them. Maybe she's funny at times. Maybe whatever the fuck she brings to the table, which at best is, is going to be minuscule compared to what you do. And on top of that, as she's getting older, her stocks are going down. As she gets older, her stock, and I get that this is uncomfortable for you, but I don't, I don't give a fuck because it's the truth. No, it's and true. as I get older and I gain more resources, wisdom, respect, and so on, my stocks go up. Right. And go well, ahead. That's why I, I like dating successful women. I have a couple of my exes are very well off. Right. And the ones that are, and they, they are, and they're like confident, confident, and comfortable with themselves. They're awesome. They're awesome. And I'm like, look, I, I like love that. I love someone that's like successful and isn't dependent on me because I think that old model is very flawed. That's why divorce rates are through the freaking roof, you know? So my financial situations cause such a rift in relationships. It's such a it's such a, a problem. So I want someone that's got their own money and understands that they have their own money. Right. And I think that is just a beautiful I think it's a beautiful thing because I don't because money causes such a problem in the world and it's not even real. So I just don't want to ever get to a, a situation, you know, and I got friends that are in relationships where money is such an issue and it's just like, it's so ridiculous. So I just want you to have your own. I have my own. We pull it a little bit. We're on the same page. That's why I love dating successful women. And, uh, and I've dated some real successful women that are worth like a lot. And I, right. they've just been, you know, now, but older than you. No, no, no. Um, one, I'm not gonna name, I'm not gonna say names because you don't have to say just with yeah. her just because but she was a very, very successful actress. She's on a very big show. Uh -huh. So she's she's got a lot. Well, but here's here's the point with that. Here's what's interesting with that. Um you women die alone. <laughs> they die alone. And what happens is especially you find attractive women because of the fact that and and what's fucked up is the situation the system is fucked up in the beginning because we have to what makes us attractive is our resources our ability to provide our p ability to protect our manhood is what makes us attractive mm -hmm. on the other hand a woman what makes her attractive to us is her looks mm -hmm. um her access to to sex and and sex and reproductive uh, abilities and so on and so forth, but her money is her money still. Like mm -hmm. you, a man doesn't a, a man doesn't upgrade himself because his woman is rich. Right, right, right. He, he may benefit from it, but you don't get to be. I'm as a man. I'm not looking at you as though you're a you're a, a dope dude simply because your wife is rich. Right, 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 right. The per I mean, I always use this example. I haven't used this in a while, but Kevin Federline won the game. Like everything ah. that we talk about getting sued for Dr. Dre got sued, got, you know, had to give up something like $300 million to his wife separated. She didn't make a beat. Like, I'm not saying that she didn't take, she didn't take care of the kids and whatever the fuck, but she never, she wasn't this creative genius. But for her to get hundreds of millions half, of dollars. She's not worth half right, the right, empire. Not worth half, so her contribution isn't half the empire. No, oh, it's, yeah. it's, 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 so there's a, there's, there's this ridiculous concept of this. And, and it's because as he becomes older, his resources grow and his maturity grows and he becomes more value. But whereas she ain't even as hot as she used to be. So now she's 40, 50 years old body starts sagging she looks like a, a garbage bag full of shoe boxes like you just like you what what attracted me is not even the thing that that gives that you are now the yeah. value that you are now and i, I look at that with women i i do look and i hope they look at me the same but i do look at how like they take care of themselves because i i can see a girl right now it's like hot right I'm like wow she's really hot but i don't know if this is going to be lasting because I think now women can be, I mean, they, they can do, you can do stuff. You can be, I mean, look at obviously everyone loses like JLo or like whatever, or like, you know, she's obviously like a uniform, but like even like Shakira, dude, Shakira, I'd marry Shakira right now. You know, right. so everyone, men and women, there's stuff out there. You can take care of yourself older and look better older. Sure. So yeah. Really yeah. But you're not, but Shakira at 25 is not better than Shakira now. No, I don't actually, 
That's the only. That's the only example I don't. All right, know. here's what. But then, even if you, even if you want to, I, I may. I don't know. Whatever. What, your, but uh, what are you saying, Dante? I didn't understand the the concept. Anecdote, of this. You may have these anecdotal situations, but what I'm saying, what what person, what thing in the world, is more valuable, under more use, age, and more use, age, and and. Uh, and and abuse in a, in a sense there's nothing that gets older that's worth more than something that's younger under a higher level of abuse and usage no i know that's, you're that's just not that's just not what the case i'm I, and i mean we we you have guys who have a you know they like a little milf or they like an older woman but we're talking about anecdotally well um and i'm not saying that you can't have a relationship with a, where somebody is kind to you and because what they bring to you and they're kind and they got your back and they know you and they finish your sentences or whatever crap you you whatever crap is important to you what i'm saying is whatever overall crap. overall the deal you make a deal that you ultimately where you gain in value when she loses in value j-lo's 50 years old and she looks great she give me a fucking 28 year old j-lo yeah. over a 50 year old yeah, j-lo of course, of course. any day of the week. so you know what what we're saying it what i'm saying is it's just so and the way the the way it works is so well, it's just what appeals to it's us just what it instinctually is. it's just what appeals to us instinctually and the desire from each part yeah women want somebody who's attractive for sure but that does not have the same value of how much men want the attraction because a woman will date somebody who is not as attractive if he has the other qualities, being powerful or being protective or being interesting, where that doesn't apply in the reverse. It's just, unfortunately, it's just that's just different. instinctually so the way we view it. She wins on the front end and you end up winning on the back end. What happens is a lot of men have been fooled to think that as they get older, that they lose their value. And because they don't understand what their value is, they will put up with anything. And they're, th they're thinking that the rules are the same for them as it is for women. Like if you, if you're a 50 year old woman, like I had a friend of mine who was, he met up with this 50 year old woman and he was like, she was, you know, she was well taken care of, went to the gym and he was like, Hey, what's up? So, you know, like he, he, he would have taken up. She goes, well, I want to get wined and dine. And he was like, yeah, old bitch, you could be coy in the rear view mirror. I'll see you. Yeah. So we're not doing he was all like, that. yeah, I, and, and it's not that he wouldn't have taken her out, but the fact that she was so adamant the, about the attitude what, that she had about it, wine the demand. And me, the, yeah. the, also, the, this doesn't sound like a fun time for the guy. It, it just sounds like right, this, this is, is exactly what I'm saying. I'm not saying like got to be on. Yeah, it's like it's got to be. A, I'm just big into a two way street. Like both people, it's expectations. Both people's expectations have to be on the same page. Like I want to go out and I want to have fun on a date. You know, like I want to. Sure. Well, have a good time and, and vibe with someone then like it's, but the, the other thing about culture. that is that there's this thing where it's incumbent upon you as the man usually to plan the date right you're usually yes, required yes. to do that so even if it's not financial what you lose is something from energy it's energy time, it's patience. Time, patience it's Be like we used yeah. to harry used to fucking hair on the back of his neck he used to stand up every time we'd have a girl on here and she would talk about spark I just don't feel it. You know what the spark nuts. is the spark is that I've listened to you, and listened to what you like and what you don't like. I've created a dossier to know what it is, and then I plan a date according to everything that I've learned about you because I paid attention. And then she's like, "I had such a great time. This wasn't accidental." Right. Also, women don't really know what they want either because, like, so for Absolutely. instance, so like because of all the dating apps right now, like. Everyone, men and women, do have like more options. I still always think women will always win. Women will always have more options than men do. It's a, it's a myth to think that men can get more women that women can get. Women can obviously we, like women have way more options than we do, and it's getting difficult for us because of this. We have to try to be more creative because we're up against so much more uh, competition now. So we have to be creative in terms of like yeah, but Johnny, where we well, I think out. what you're not taking into consideration is. But I don't get creative. I just don't care. I'll just be like. Right. Yo, you can go out Tuesday. No, but I don't get creative. I don't. That's what I'm saying. I don't put the effort in. I'll be like, yo, I, I live a cool life. I got Tuesday free. We can go out. We can get to know each other. If we're vibing, then I'll take you to some cool shit because I can take you to some cool shit. I always think in my head, I'm see, the reason I hate like dating right now and like I don't even try on the apps is because I get really excited because I'm an optimist because every girl's profile will be like, 
I just want a guy. I just want a guy that will that will that will make me laugh and that I can travel with. And I'm like, dude, every girl should love me. This is right, great. Right, right. I'll make you laugh. I do it for a living, and I travel for a living. We can go. We can go to a lot of places. So I'm like, done, deal. But they don't really want that. They just no. say that, but they really want some dude named Kyle who has a finance job who went to San Diego once three years ago and still talks about the margaritas. Like they want basic dudes to settle down with, but they act like they don't. Yeah. So it's frustrating for me because I'm just like, yo, you guys don't know what you want. And it's like, it's like, it's like, you know what I mean? And it's like, I'm not just going to take you like to the, you know, a Knicks game in the box date one. You know, there might be some dude if he does that, but that's probably all he can do. You know, like I'm not showing you for all sure. my hands. I'm not showing you all my hands. Get to know me. And then I'll show you my hands. Right, but understanding what your value is, and that you ultimately have value, and that yeah. you're interested, which is in what it, he's doing. Is, is, is yeah. Exactly, is it, that's exactly what I'm saying. And the, the fact that I need to work to get you, when I'm gonna have to pay for the date, I'm gonna have to. Be, I mean, very rarely I, I can count on one hand the times that I've been out on a date and the woman was interesting. Her conversation with it's me being on me being funny me being interesting me being it's it's all from my resources that creates this this spark and then then she goes well you know i really liked him because i feel like we had a spark no i was dope and you wasn't you you got to in new york to, i'm you, like in new york i'm like the tinder unswindler because i don't let anyone know what i have or what i do really right I, right I play it I'm like, oh, like I play, like I'll, I'll wear, I won't even like, I had this one girl, she was really, 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 really cute, 26. I wore an office t-shirt uh, and I the wore- The TV show, the I TV wearing, show, The Office? Yeah, 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 yeah. But it was like a, it was like a cool one. Yeah. And I was wearing diesel pants that she doesn't know are actually $350 pants, but like they were like joggers. And then I was wearing like Wolverine shoes that are super expensive, but because of my t-shirt didn't match the I'd collared look she wanted, she literally was like, you could have gotten a little more dressed for this. I was like, yeah, cool. Bye. <laughs> like, yeah. what? My teeth, like, I don't, that's why I wore this. Did you, Horror. did you leave or no? We had a horrible time. Uh, I couldn't stand her. And I, I did, I did end up paying for drinks. And then I just, so, kept, she kept wanting to hang out. So here's a little bit of a kicker. Someone set me up with her. This was a little bit different. So it's not the best example. She did, she was, she wanted to meet me. Right. But then I think she might've been trying to play like whatever that, but I think she thought maybe cause I was wearing that t-shirt that like, I didn't care, but I'm just like, dude, I'm just chill. This is a first date, not a, you know, it's like, what do you Yeah, but yeah, I mean, this is, a, and we, you and I were talking about this over at, at, at the comedy club and it, and it was like, there was, I mean, somebody was heckling you something. And I mean, I know you've yeah, been yeah, doing yeah. it 10 years and, I, and I've been doing it 21. And I said to you, I said, and you were talking about this bit that was involved. And I said, a lot of times when you you want the bit to work, what happens is you try harder. When the order, when the audience withholds, we have a tendency to try harder. And the 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 the, the real as a the real move, the pro move is to try less because yeah, totally. even when you when you start to try harder what you're doing is you're communicating a sense of neediness and that you neediness can't give, power. You can't give the crowd your right, power. and you give them no. the power yeah. and then once you give them the power then they go well i don't know if i like this thing and i'll you know and i used to do, it, it's it's i i go i don't i don't give a fuck like i know what this is i know what i'm doing this is i know i'm funny you're a plumber She's a secretary. Right, right, you right. You work right. at the, the, the social security office. None of y'all are funny. Right, None right. of you, you have to pay people to make you laugh. All of my friends are funny. So right. you don't get to make a choice. You don't even get to decide what's funny. Right, I'll right. tell you what it is. And what's interesting is when you take that posture, it, immediately they go, oh, okay. A woman always wants you to take charge, but she wants you to feel, she wants to feel confident that if you're gonna drive, that you know how to drive. And when you make that clear about, when you make that clear, like if somebody said to me, you could have got dressed, I go, you know what, we could just not do this. I well, don't that, even do I, the drinks. Essentially what I was saying, I was right. what I said, but like also I gotta be a little, you know, we gotta be a little careful now, unfortunately. So I was just like- well, You don't have to be careful if you, if you eject from the date because she says something. Because here's when somebody says, 
you should have gotten dressed. It's so the 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 the, the my value is what you perceive. You, you feel as though you should set this bar, and I should clear this bar for you. I don't even know if I like you. Well, the In fun- fact the fact that you said this, I don't like you. I actually kind of liked the culture in LA dating a little more, if I'm being honest. I never, I can't believe I'm ever, I can't believe I'm actually saying this, but I did like it a little bit more. I, I find here girls will do this thing where they'll be like, they'll try to schedule a date for like a week, a week and a half out. And they'll be like, it'll be like Tuesday we're texting. I'll be like, all right, so I'm free next Thursday. And I'm like, yeah, dude, I don't know if I am. I can't like, right. like that's wild that you are trying. So I, I just will, I just will always be like, no, nah, I'm not available. Sorry. You know? But I, I what, found what that, is the response from that? I, I don't think they usually care because I think they probably have in my in my mind, and I could be wrong, they probably have, you know, five other dates lined up for the week. You're, you're, uh, listen, the bottom line is, uh, you look, it, women have plenty more options. The problem is they don't have the options that they want. Exactly. Yeah, totally. And, and so it doesn't matter how many options. That. That's why I go, okay, cool, yeah, see ya. Yeah, so like if somebody said to me, well, you could address more, I go, you know, we could just not do this. Yeah, yeah totally. And then they go, well, what, why, what, why? I go, because I don't know you and I'm, uh, I don't know you and I'm, I don't even know if I like you. Yeah. So you're making demands on me and I don't even know if I like you. See, the and assumption- that's the man, It comes from the supply and demand that I will experience. Yes. You might be, I don't know if you'll be, Proud of this, I think it's weird. Yeah, but I'll probably be kept, proud of it. She kept wanting to hang out. Of course, you know why? Because she didn't give a fuck. And I, I think she wanted me to make a move and be like, "Let's go back to my place." And I just was not into it. And I was just like, "I'm not even gonna give her that." Well, here's the interesting so thing. I, just, I was like, "All right." Then finally, I was like, "All right, I'm just gonna," I, I, you know, this has been grand to go. And she was like, she was like confused, like, "Wait, you're not even gonna ask me that?" And I'm like, "I don't want to be like, no, dude, this has been horrible." Like. You know, yeah. did you say that? Because I, I would say that. No, no, no. I just went. No, you know, I'm a little tired, and you know, uh, we right. yeah. Out. I don't. I don't. You know, if you, I won't. I'll, I'll go. Let's. Her know, face like this. I'll, right. I'll, I'll be like, yeah. I'll, let's. You know, let me drop you home, and then when they, if they ask me why, like I won't do anything. Like I don't think you have to be a dick. Like I don't think you should be a dick for the sake of being a dick. But well, I do. Oh, she had something else that was wild too. Go ahead. So my, my buddy was like, this is my uh, fiance's friend. Uh, I want you to take her out. And I was like, all right. And I was like, oh, she's cute. So when we were there and she's already being like a little bit naggy, like, ne- yeah, I was, like, I was like, so tell me, I was like, beautiful girl, you seem nice. I go, you're, how you, you're, yeah. I was like, uh, how are you having any trouble dating in this city? Like trying to be nice. And she goes, I'm not. And I go, oh, why? I, I think I said, like, I don't know why I'm here. And she's like, why? I go, I was under the impression you wanted to go out with me. And then she kind of acted like she wasn't, but I know she was. So I was like, dude, I didn't want to ask. My buddy was like, ask this girl out. She like wants to hang out. And I was like, okay. So it doesn't time, matter. I mean, it, 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 you're true. You're too empathetic, which I get because I'm also empathetic. So you're right. trying to, but what I've had to learn and that's is that's where I come in. Yeah, that's where Dante <laughs> came in. Wait, you know what? You need to tap me out. That, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. that's a show right there. Yeah. That's a show. When a date's going wrong and then Dante just taps him out and then just sits down and is like, look, I'm going to be real with you. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's a very short show because most of the men with I'm leaving, <laughs> I'm out. So it doesn't, you can't fill 22 minutes. Uh, but it, when you're empathetic, you're, you're considering like, Oh, what are they going through? What it, what's going yeah, on? There yeah. might be something else. I don't want to hurt their feelings. And when you just cut to the chase, you you learn to go. I'm not wasting my time. Whatever it is, I don't know the backstory. I'm not your psychologist. I'm not your therapist. And I'm not planning on being in your life to fix it long term. How about, how about I gotta this? go. How Bye. about this? I don't like you enough yeah. to give a fuck yet. Yeah. I, I'm not willing to be unhappy because yeah. you're a cunt. Like I I, I that's I'm not. This is, uh, yeah. I'm already know, because I already know that if this does work out, it's going to cost me time, money, energy, and patience. Under the best of circumstances. That's, that's if I like her and she's dope, it's still going to cost. So if we're already starting out with you thinking that you're doing me a favor, peace, like beat it. Yeah, and it's also like 
we, you know, our nights are so valuable to us too. So for me to like take a full night off to be like, Hey, I'm taking this night off for you. Like, you know what? I, I, I would say for years what I would be like, I would be like, look, I do comedy. You want to come, you can meet me because I don't stop doing this for nobody. So if you want to meet me there, you can meet me there. When I'm done with my last one, we could maybe get a drink or we could stay there and get a drink. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not adjusting myself you're not worth that. And I'm not saying that women are not worthy worthy of that. What I'm saying is just like she, the problem is they think that they're interviewing you when the reality is yeah, that yeah, no, you, totally, totally. you should be interviewing them because of the fact of what you said, everything that you said about spending money, you know, I got to pay, I got to this, I got to that, I got to be interesting, I got to be funny, I got to figure out if you got a peanut allergy so we don't go to Korean food because you don't, you know what I'm saying? I, there's exactly. all of these, these moving parts, which I don't mind. I don't mind doing it. But if you show me one inkling of the fact that you don't appreciate what I'm doing, fuck you. I could yeah. just not do this. I could go do a spot. I'll meet you for drinks. Right. It's right. going to be more fun anyway. I will say I don't like, um, Initially bringing girls to see me stand up. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. Mm. So. Yeah, it's it's hard. As a matter of fact, the person Why that's not? calling me is uh um I don't like people coming to see me initially do stand up. Um because I don't want them to have these expectations of me because I find when they see you on stage, they become a little more into you and a little weirder. So In I want way? to know me. Uh, Hold I up. Just, you know what? Let's let's stop it here. We're going to do something behind the Patreon. Plug your social media and then we'll go behind the pay, behind the paywall. Uh, John Campanelli one um, on Instagram, which uh, I wish I had the right, all the John Campanelli's that I don't. So John Campanelli one on Instagram and Twitter and all that stuff. And TikTok. Okay. Harry talk. Uh, all my stuff is at Harry Turjanian. Uh, follow my TikTok and all that stuff. And uh, join us over at Patreon. Patreon.com slash Manschool202 for bonus content. Yo, y'all know how to get me. Everything Dante Nero. D-A-N-T-E-N-E-R-O. Dante Nero.com if you need a consultation. Um, and uh, GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The Sexual Revolution is being podcast. Yo, I love y'all. Follow us on Patreon. We appreciate you going behind the page paywall. Um, on Patreon. Uh, sign up for that. It helps us. If you like what we're doing, um, help us so we can keep doing it.